These are Topping's top of the line DAC and amplifiers, and I will be the first to tell you that these are amazing, but most people shouldn't buy them. Most people should buy these. <laughs> For $200 a piece, these things offer insane value. Both feature DACs, amplifiers, Bluetooth, remote control, and some amazing specifications. Now these are similar, but they do serve different functions. One is the DX3 Pro Plus, which we've talked about before on this channel. The other is the MXS3, which we have not yet talked about on this channel, but I'm actually really digging this thing. The two types of people that this is for. One is for a specific and only a headphone user. Somebody who has a lot of headphones wants to use this with and only with headphones. The other is going to be sort of a jack of all trades, master of none for a speaker and headphone listener because it actually has both a speaker output and a headphone output. Now, high-end headphone companies are actually what is making this a more appealing deal than it was before because high-end headphone companies are actually making their headphones more and more efficient. They are lowering the barrier to entry for what you need to actually run them for them to sound good, if not their best. We're going to take advantage of that. Objectively, the DX3 Pro Plus might be the best DAC and amplifier combo for $200. Like the specifications really support it being, if not one of the best, the best. It's very, very good. I have a full review of that. I will link that down below. I'd highly recommend watching that after because in this video, we are going to be talking about use case and you might actually find that the MX is a better unit for you. So let's talk about some of the differences between these two units. They're very similar on the build, except for a slight different face design, but largely they're exactly the same dimensions. Now, as much as I like the DX3 Pro, I do think that the MX has some massive advantages over that DX. Now, the MX is a fantastic all-rounder. Uh, this will play pretty confidently in small rooms or definitely in desktop situations with speakers. <music> Speaker output is about 70 watts, which is plenty for desktop situations. But the real advantage to this thing is all the different features that it has. Not only is this a DAC in itself, but it also has Bluetooth. It has a remote control. But the real kicker here is the fact that this has treble and bass adjustments that work with both headphones and speakers. And it's not just bass and treble boost. You can actually reduce the treble or reduce the bass if you choose to. I think a lot of people are going to push a little bit more bass out of their desktop speakers. And I think a lot of people might also like a little bit of bass into their headphones. Now, out of the headphone output, this is putting out about 700 milliwatts into 32 ohms, which is about half that of the 1.5 watts coming out of the DX3 Pro Plus. Both of these range in the realm of good enough for most situations. Uh, the MX is going to hit its limitations faster. You are probably not gonna wanna pair this with some really demanding planar headphones. If you've got something relatively efficient, a little bit lower end, something like a Sundara, I think that's gonna handle just fine on this. That headphone hits its peak sound quality pretty easily. And I think something like this MX will be able to handle that no problem. The DX will blow that headphone out of the water and you can step up to much bigger, more demanding headphones like something like that Aria Organic that we just covered on this channel. Now, if Topping could figure out a way to do a perfect marriage between these two to get this form factor, this speaker output, and this headphone output with the DSP adjustment capability, that would be just ridiculous like that would just be so overpowered for 200 dollars. i wouldn't be surprised if they're going to do it next year but only time will tell so let's talk about use cases um the use case for the mx is pretty clear it's somebody who has both speakers and headphones at their desk if you are not running past the speakers you really don't need this unit unless you really want that bass and treble adjustment but EQ is also free and you can use that with the DX3 Pro, especially if you're using a computer. Now, both of these feature just incredibly good specifications. The total harmonic distortion for both is minimal. The signal to noise ratio and dynamic range on both is very, very good. For headphones overall, the DX3 is obviously a lot better, not just for power, but like overall specification capability, but it also doesn't do quite as much having the speaker output as the MX. Okay, we get it. Um, you could run a different alternative type of speaker output, though, with the DX being into active speakers, which is personally 
how I use it. And my personal desk setup uses active speakers and not passive ones. And that would just be out of the RCA out of the back. The listening impressions for both of these is relatively similar. They both have kind of a topping house sound of seeming incredibly clean sounding. Um, they are very kind of neutral straight down the line and that's either going to be a good thing or a bad thing personally i like this sound signature myself if you want something that leans a little bit more warm through the mid-range this may not be the place to get it and i don't think you should be looking for that either i think that these perform really well with their very clean sound signature it's very straight narrow kind of afraid to make too many mistakes it's not particularly cold it's not particularly warm it doesn't really have a big tonal leaning um compared to some other topping things like that a70 pro that i had out here which is a, a headphone amplifier has a warmer shift than this dx3 pro does and a lot more power and whether you like it or not for these entry-level models you are going to be stuck with a pretty neutral tuning So why do I say that most people should buy these? Well, it's really the price point versus what they're capable of. In the DX3 review that we do, we talk all about the incredible specifications that really cannibalizes its higher end line. Things like the DX5 or even the DX7, I think a lot of people don't need those upgrades and you get most of what that offers in a fraction of the price with the DX3 Pro. Now, the MX is more complicated. It depends on how much you care about any particular thing. For example, if you really like your speaker setup, but you don't really care so much about your headphone setup, even if you have some headphones, it might be worth it to actually forego an all-in-one like this and just get a really good speaker amplifier for $200 instead. That might be the move for you or vice versa. Maybe you need passive speaker amplifier, but you really want a really good headphone amplifier. I think this will satisfy most customers in that situation, but it depends on your specific niche use case. I do think objectively, as far as an all-in-one like this for $200, this is around about as good as it gets. Now, when you look at something similar like a SMSL AD18, which kind of covers the same territory as, as this being an all-in-one for both headphones and speakers, the specifications really separate the two. The specifications for the AD18 are actually a little bit higher for the speaker output being about 80 watts. But when you look at some of the other specifications like the total harmonic distortion, when you look at like kind of the, the quality of sound coming out of there, it's not really competitive at all. Also subjectively, I think that this sounds a lot better. And also topping is very good at, I think, playing within its limits. So if you're really pushing this amplifier to the max, it doesn't really sound like you're forcing more out of it than it wants to do, like with some cheaper amplifiers, kind of like the AD18. Now, back in the day when the AD18 came out, it was actually really good and one of the only things that did it. But fast forward quite a few years later, and the technology has just progressed to be superior in terms of the quality behind things. Also, I'm looking at the specification sheet for the AD18 right now. The headphone output of the AD18 is 53 milliwatts as opposed to 700 milliwatts out of this. It's also at only 0.04% total harmonic distortion, whereas this is in like the 0.000% total harmonic distortions. So it's far cleaner, better specifications, more power, just better overall, and you have the DSP adjustments, and you have the latest versions of Bluetooth and USB. This is just superior to a lot of things in its current class and capability. Now, when it comes to use cases with the MX, this is actually entering kind of a low-level hi-fi setup capability for a front room if you have efficient speakers. I can use these on SVS Ultra Towers. And while this is not pushing those speakers to their max capability, I still think it sounds really solid for $200. Like it's, it's shockingly good for the size and price of this. If you pair it with the right stuff, it, it's impressively full sounding. It's actually pretty insane. Um, I wouldn't pair this with like magnet pans, probably not gonna be the best pairing. So yeah, both of these, when it comes to specification, ability and price, they're just, they seem unbeatable right now. And it makes me very excited for where the industry is gonna go. So these are two topping amplifiers that I think you should actually 